We're going to talk to Oliver. He's been waiting for a little bit now. Oliver, you are live on Truth Wanted. What is up? Hello. Hello, J. Mike. Objectively, Dan. Oh, thank you for taking my call. Big fan. And watching the TA for just a couple of years, and I discovered your show. So I'm I'm very pleased to meet you guys here on the air. Thank you for taking my call. I gotta say I love your title, Truth Wanted. That's something I've always wanted to just learn more in my life. I've always loved science, math too, and I consider myself a seeker of the truth and hopefully lifelong. So that's good. Uh, we'll yeah. fit right in here, Oliver. That's great. So what do you want to talk to us about? <laughs> I, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm hoping I could get a little enlightenment on, I don't know, comment question, just on science in general, because something I did not understand growing up and even now as a, uh, as an adult, for example, wanting to learn as much as I could of the truth. I had a couple religious experiences with people, with religions, experiences with different religions. But when I would ask questions, I now I understand that what they, what they, they gave me ad hominem attacks when I would mm-hmm. ask these questions and they would say things like, oh, now you're being a scientist. And I didn't quite get that. And then with the whole flat earth thing, which blew my mind, I was thinking, how can people believe this in this age, the age of information, how can people believe this? And now, even more recently with the pandemic, people talking about, like, okay, you, you, you can't trust the science. You, you can't, yeah. And I, I don't get it. Why does science have such a negative stigma? Why does it get such a bad rap? Yeah. I, don't well, I, I have an idea. Uh, about it. And then J. Mike obviously has some thoughts too. Um, So here's my take on this. Okay. When you say that you have truth about something and science is a kind of truth in a way, right? Science is an explanation about the world. Then that has power. Okay. Because you get to say, this is how things really are. And that power is valuable to some people. And that power is also like diametrically opposed to other institutions of power, like the Christian church, right? So Christianity has had not only a, a moral, uh, a moral authority over people. It's also had a scientific authority over people in the past. You don't see it as much now, Mm -hmm. but how they've described how the world is and the events that have taken place. Like that's been the thing. Okay. Like that the church has been responsible for doing and, and, and science as a Western concept that we've developed it, has been more separated from the religious, but in ancient times, it, it it was kind of one and the same. Your understanding of the world was also your understanding of religion. So the now that we've separated that more, mm. and we've seen that this is an institution that generates a kind of power, there's going to be people opposed to it. And that's why you see, specifically in the United States, more so than other countries in the West, the biggest opposition to science like in evolution, uh, in terms of uh, gay, trans rights, uh, and, and other kinds of things, because it opposes that structure that's there right when you say actually you're not true because of science Ah. suddenly you have to have an answer for that because science is a really powerful thing um so you know that's that's kind of my take on that jay mike do you have any thoughts Ah. yeah um i think the biggest so kind of two things one you got to kind of understand the paradigm that they're both working under uh yeah so religious people are coming from a, a position of what they believe like their attitude towards it is that it is certain. So they come from this certain background. That's true. So to have any idea of like a um, what's called like falsification in science, which um, there's a really good literature on uh, going from like verification to falsification and and um, why falsification is, is so much more important uh, from my perspective. But the idea is going to be that it's going to be tough for somebody to get a whole, get beyond get behind the idea that science is self-correcting or that um, it's going you know mm-hmm. you're going to be able to falsify any bit of the knowledge you have with science with new information and a lot I think a lot of people since they come from this the background of certainty as opposed to science always allowing for falsification for any theory or any idea that it has it doesn't just stop mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> there's this level of it seems to me that there's this level of 
well, then we can't really know anything if it's always subject to being corrected. <laughs> and that seems intuitive for a lot of people, but the issue is you're never going to start. Like if I want to build a house, I'm not going to just build mansions or, and stuff like that. You're going to have to start from scratch. You're going to have to use tools that might not, they might be crude, they might not work. And you'll have to figure out what tools are better, how to lay down the foundation better. But that's the only way that you have a successful foundation for a house or, um, you know, a successful neighborhood or infrastructure or whatever it might be. Um, and it gets to the point where people want they, what they don't realize when they're when they're coming from this place of certainty is they're really just sitting in this empty lot um, and they're coming up going, well, how, how do you, you know, they're seeing us build houses with this tool like science and they're going, well, why is it, you know, how, how do you know that tool doesn't, it might not work, right? It might not be the right tool. But when I look over kind of at their lot, they're kind of kicking rocks and there's, there's no foundation set. And mm. then worse than that, they're on our infrastructure that we've built using our infrastructure, like science, right? To get on a computer and then invoke this kind of incredulity or ignorance while using that infrastructure that we've built with that method. And so there's just this really kind of ironic aspect to it from my perspective, um, because I'm okay with you telling me, hey, there's another tool uh, that gets us to God or something, and it's not science. But the problem is, if you're telling me my hammer is not the right tool or there could be a better tool, like you can't even take me to fucking Lowe's and show me what aisle your tool is in. I can't even like lick it to see if it would give me like a metallic taste in my mouth. There's like nothing of substance for me to know you know, of this tool. And so I think that people appeal to certainty without actually appealing to the, to a methodology. But once they realize that you have to appeal to a methodology, you have to build from knowledge. You're not just going to have it given to you. Um, and insight. so good that insight. would be probably the way I'd put it. Mm. I agree mentioning the technology, like the computer, like for example, I've talked to quite a few people talk about like, Oh, you can't, believe this. However, they trust the cell phone they're on that receives signals from the satellites in space, yet space is fake, and satellites don't exist up there. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't I don't know. The, well, the flat earth thing uh, with that is, is a huge, was a huge spark for me, Oliver, because I was getting in, like into spiritualism and these types of things, and I started believing in the conspiracy theories, and I had a conversation with the flat earther, and I got destroyed. Like I, I got, I came out of that conversation going, maybe the earth is flat, right? And it put me down this, this whole spiral of that. But once I went and I did the research and I started looking into things, I was like, oh, now I actually understand. I can go back to this conversation and like, be like, well, here's why, where I was wrong. But that's the thing that these people, from my opinion, it's the thing that these people don't do. They don't yep. make that, extra, they just live in that bias, um, it's yeah. there's the distinction there's you know two type of people people that care people that don't care yeah and, and let's think about this too you know if you were like me and you believed in a god that was capricious right consistency isn't necessarily a requirement for belief things just kind of happen because they happen god does what he wants because it's his will i mean this is the kind of logic that you're working with whereas if you're working with science there is a methodology that you have to build upon or if you're working with logic there's a methodology that you traditionally have to build upon to really make that and that's just not something that at least christianity most forms of it in the u.s really teaches you you know yes are there are there scholarly christian circles absolutely and historically that's always been the thing from the very beginning i would argue but but hit Christianity as a mass cultural thing, not necessarily, and especially not evangelicalism, right? Mm. No, I, I could definitely see how I've benefited more in my recent years as an adult learning about critical thinking, logic, and epistemology. Me I mean, if you asked me a couple of years ago, I would have had a vague, distant understanding of what that meant, but not yeah. actually really a pull to how I think, believe. Me too, Oliver. The perception. Me too. Yeah. So it, it, if, if I was still a Christian right now, I would probably be in some foreign country trying to tell my beliefs to other people who don't need it. You know, that's what I'd be doing with my life. Instead, I get to be on this show, but also just like I learn and discover new things every day about the world and how it works. And it's because of that healthy interest in science and in 
philosophy and in things that I just wasn't really encouraged to have in Christianity. You know, most Christians really don't care <laughs> about that stuff. It's sad. Well, I want to say thank you for sharing this. I'm so glad I found your show. And I think we need a lot more of this publicly in schools. I think it's very lacking in our world. So thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate it. Oh. Well, thank you, Oliver. This show can only happen because of callers like you who call in and also support the show in, in all the different ways. So th thanks sincerely, sincerely. Thank you so much for doing your part. And thank you to everybody watching, you of course. You guys are the best. Thank Oliver, thanks so much. Nice yes, yeah, thank, thank you for your kind words. Really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, we, we're we here because we think it's cool, too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> talking about this stuff. Like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree. I wish more critical thinking stuff was taught in schools in general. If you had to change, like, one subject, it, that would be the one I'd make, like, mandatory, right? But it's not. So what are you going to do? You know, keep advocating for it, I guess. That's what we do. It's start calling shows. Yep. That's real activism right there. It's just like, you know, just the same. You got to build the foundation. And once mm -hmm. it gets stronger and stronger, people will take notice, I think. But that's that's the that's the hope. <laughs> yes, that is the hope. 